Hi, this is Adeen here. Today I'm doing another big video review. This time it's the DX Mazinger Z from Bandai. And here's the shipper that it comes in. You can see on top I've got the uh, SH Monster Arts King Kong just for a bit of scale there. I don't know what I'm going to do with this box. It is huge. I've got nowhere to put it. But anyway, let's get it open and have a look at what's inside. So here's the inner. Um, it is massive. I was expecting it because I've seen pictures, but oh god, this thing is a huge box. It looks really nice, man. I really seriously have nowhere to put this. I don't want to throw it out because it costs a fortune, but uh, I think I need a bigger house. If you turn it on its side up like this, you can see that the outside is actually uh, a slip. So just pull that off. And then on the inside, we have this kind of monochrome picture of Amazing Z. By the way, it looks pretty nice. Although it is quite a lot of packaging, but I guess that adds to the kind of premium feel of it. Up here, we've got the DX Soul of Chagokin. A good place to start the review of the actual figure, I think, is the hanger. The hanger is a huge component in this set. So normally... A Chugokan or something is is mainly focused on the robot and this set is really strongly focused on the robot but for display purposes we get this awesome kind of armored almost obelisk like um, case with these rivet holes all over it really industrial looking strong strong lines it's it's square on the top square on the bottom down here it has a nice Metal plaque, Soul of Chugokin, DX Amazing Z. It's really nice. Uh, incidentally, this had to be stuck on with double sided tape that comes in the box, so uh, be careful not to lose the plaque when you first open the package up. I've heard it said more than a few times that um, some people wish that the upcoming Scrander set was what was packaged with Mazinger instead of the hanger, but I'm not in that camp. I think. This is an awesome thing to have. I would have bought this just by itself. And I feel that the only way we were ever going to get this was with the Mazinger figure. So I already own the Scrander, but it hasn't arrived yet. I bought that uh, a couple of weeks ago. And I will review that when it comes. But for the time being, I'm just looking at plain Mazinger Z without his backpack today. One thing to keep in mind is that this is huge. Uh, where's my ruler? Here we go. So from the ground to the top, 15 inches or 38 centimetres, depending on who you are. Now that, that is an imposing and impressive piece to put anywhere, but it does take up quite a bit of space. So finding that perfect spot is not as straightforward as you might hope. I'm going to open this up. It's a little bit hard to open, but that's a good thing. So it doesn't flop around. So it's got these panels at the front and if you can get your fingers sort of opposing each other the best way is to just push sideways like this it's very tempting to do it from the top that's it's the easiest way but I feel that doing it from the top pushes down and it's going to make eventually some kind of scratch marks oh you can't see what I'm pointing at sorry is eventually going to make some kind of scratch marks on the edge here just because of the downwards force uh, out of the box it's pretty perfect the movement there is uh, no scratching but if you keep pushing down to open it, it will kind of ruin that in time. So it's a good idea to use the handholds that are provided. If you're planning to leave it open uh, in this position on display permanently, I feel that it's a good idea to use these little legs, these stands that are provided at the side that fold down like that. And that's just so that gravity doesn't uh, gradually deform these doors because they are pretty big. They must weigh quite a bit. Uh, they do have a really thick metal rod that holds them in place, but better to be safe than sorry, so I just like to use those stands. Straight away you might notice that I've got these lights on. Um, I'm going to reach to the back, flip the switch. There is a little switch. It takes three AAA batteries. They seem to last for a really long time, little LEDs in there. It's really awesome. This is targetable, so you can move it up and down and rotate it around. So you've got 90 degrees there, 90 degrees there. Very, very versatile. 
Uh, I'm going to cut the lights just a little bit so you can get an idea of how those spotlights work. So I've still got a bright light on in here. It's not totally dark, but at least that shows up a bit better. So you can see that you can really aim them to highlight the part that you want the most. Now, in a totally dark room, it can be hard to get the face region to light up, but you can see how that light moves up and down. You, you do have a lot of control over it. It's just that the face is in a little bit of a recess here. So sometimes you might, you might be able to get the outline of this crest up here highlighted, but the lower part of the face does tend to remain pretty dark when you're in absolute darkness. Apart from those spotlights on the base, uh, Amazinger Z has other light features in here. So to show that a bit better, I'm going to disconnect this railing and open it up. Let's just move this little mechanical truck out of the way. We get this infrared remote control and it functions by pushing combinations as well as single buttons. It's actually, I'm not sure of all the combinations yet, but I have figured that this, this combination is breast fire and this combination is the eyes. So let's check out how the chest can light up. It does focus the light more along the bottom, but if all the lights are off at the time, the whole thing does glow and it is pretty impressive. I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, but as I said, I've still got some lights on here. Sorry, they're going out of focus. Now the eyes. If I had anything that I would complain about, and this is very few complaints about this figure, it is really, really good, I would like a switch to just turn on those two lights and leave them on. Because you get this kind of... Uh, darkness in here given that he's standing in a big box and to be able to have his eyes and chest glowing all the time would just be really really awesome so here we've got our dx mazinger i've left in the back this uh, plug it's stuck in there you can see it can actually take quite a bit of weight this is the attaching point i just pull it out for that uh, hanger that we saw, this kind of snaps onto a peg at the back and that's just to make sure he doesn't bounce around in there while you're carrying the box. So, didn't know what that was at first, I thought it was part of one of those cranes but definitely it's meant to snap on here, that's a nice little add-on. That fixing point, which you can see here, I'm pretty sure that this is going to be used for the scrander to join onto given that it's such a strong connecting point and it, it actually, it's a bit like the mech tech on Dark of the Moon Transformers where it fills its own hole in when you're not using it. Nice little feature. The holes you can see at the on his upper back there are um, speaker holes where his sound can comes out. So let's have a listen to one of the tunes that he's got. That was the most part of his posability, but he also has a uh, neck swivel here. When you do turn the head, you've got to really clamp 
the face plate on because it has a tendency to come off like this. That's part of his uh, removable armor gimmick. And you also got to watch these because these are really not strongly attached. But um, this, that can happen. And hang on, where's it gone? Come back here. This is uh, beautifully made, these little bits that go on his chest, his breast fire weapon, or I don't know what you call it. But I worry about dropping it onto hard surfaces, and that's because there's a seam right on the pointy part here, and if you hit it into the ground hard enough, this thing is, is probably going to break. So given that it's really loosely attached, I suggest whenever you're going to move the figure, remove these first. Now I'm on a spongy surface right now, so no worries here, I'm not too worried about it, but um, definitely pack these away before moving the figure. I think that's better to be safe than sorry. And we also get backwards and forwards motion at the neck as well. Uh, the hands are on balls. But this is only one of the two kinds of hands. I like the look of the closed fist better than the articulated hands, but I'll show you the articulated hands in a minute. I think before I move on to all the other details, it's a good idea to cover the elbow and the rocket punch. So the rocket punch is the only feature on this toy that I think, I shouldn't call it a toy, this display piece that is not executed well, in my opinion. Um, I love the quality and the fit and finish of this, but the elbow is supposed to come off like this. And they've tried to do it in a way that gives uh, accurate representation of what's inside those pieces when you pull them off. But the problem I get is that the mechanism that locks it into place, this little nub, is inadequate for a strong bond so too much posing of the figure just moving it around results in the arms falling off and Bandai must realize this because in the instructions they very clearly state that when you rotate the arm hold it by the bicep here and uh, don't hold it by this part so that they understand that the pieces are going to fall off and they're just trying to mitigate that and uh, given that this is a a display piece not a toy I understand why they've gone with a locking mechanism that has kind of show accuracy because they want the rocket punch to look show accurate I mean but I would have preferred honestly just a, a solid peg that holds it in there and not this weird way so the weird way that I'm talking about is you get the elbow and you bend it up like this and you can see that red section in there that it's like a little button that goes up and down and in here there's a kind of peg and by pushing sometimes it goes in and by pushing the let's put it in like that and by pushing the red thing we get it to come up like that and the idea is that you you put it like this with these panels lined up properly You do exactly what I'm doing now. I'm pushing the red thing hard, but you can see it doesn't want to mate. I'll try again. It's, it's lined up properly. It just doesn't want to do it. So there's three little notches here, and they're supposed to give some orientation because there are also three little notches on here. So in theory, if they're lined up correctly, you hold it in place, you push the red thing in, it's supposed to lock, but it just doesn't, and it's executed pretty poorly, that joint. I don't know what to say. I mean, let's take this off. You see what I mean? Now, I'm going to turn the camera off and fiddle with this for about five minutes to get it to join again. But uh, it is a little bit of a nuisance. Now, you can see I did get it back on. So I'm not saying that it doesn't 100% not work. Uh, it's just that the amount of force you've got to put you need to hold it with two hands in exactly the right angle and you'll hear a little snap sound once you've made the joint connect properly and it feels to me that the force you need to put is almost as great as the force that would break that little red button so uh, I try to avoid it 
and you really it's not something I wanted to do with one hand on camera I really needed to hold it exactly right with two hands but uh, yeah I would have even been happy if the arm if the rocket punch didn't even come off to tell you the truth so far I've been showing it with these see-through breast plates that are designed to channel the light feature through but if you don't like the way that that looks I mean honestly I do like the way that looks you can see the kind of structure of it inside it looks really awesome to me but if you don't they very easily come off like that and you get two alternate pieces which are just a solid red and they will just sit on like that but again take them off before moving the figure because they're not attached in any solid way you can see that they're just very lightly sitting on there I do like that the way it looks as well but I, I think I prefer the see-through ones here is the alternate hand that I mentioned a moment ago and it's got crazy levels of detail so the, there's a ball joint on each of the first knuckles and then there's a, a pivot on the next knuckle up so show you how that goes the fingers can spread right out like that turn around bend at the joint there it's, it's probably one of the best hands I've ever seen the thumb has a ball at the base of the thumb like this and it also has a pivot there so every finger on this has two points of articulation it's really really done very well but I just like the way that the solid fist looks better so I use that but I've got to give them credit for this hand if you want to articulate the fingers you couldn't do better than this another kind of standard piece we get is this panel this actually replaces the arm panel here and it attaches to the forearm I'm not sure why you would want to do that but uh, perhaps when the rocket punch comes off you might want to join this panel onto the front part of the rocket punch instead of having it stay behind I don't know I don't really have much use to use this piece but uh, it must have happened in the show once I don't really know about that one the figure itself is covered in removable armor plates which I'm about to get to but before I do that um, there are also alternate removable armor plates I'm just going to show the right side here but there's actually a left side of this as well so you get one for each side this can replace his chest so you can have it split evenly on and off down the center and at the very end I'll show you what it looks like completely done like that but for now we've got a chest we've got uh, half of the waist like this uh, incidentally the scrander that's coming I think has a new waist attachment with a little extra detail in the middle and we also have the kind of a half of a groin so we do get left and right halves for each of these three pieces let's take our little pilot out Besides the general awesomeness and huge hangar, the other main selling point on this figure, I guess, is the removable armor. So let's get busy with that. First, I'm going to take off these breastplates. Now, there's definitely an order which is the best way to take the armor off on this figure. And for going off, you want to focus on the bigger panels first, like the chest, the groin, the shins, and then you can do thighs biceps, waist, that kind of business. So I'm going to start with the chest. And I don't know if that came across there, but it is actually really securely mounted. This is not a flimsy piece which is just barely hanging on. Um, look, none of these pieces have any likelihood whatsoever to just fall off on their own. And it's executed perfectly. I mean, I can't think of a better way Let's pull off the groin. I mean, this, this piece is actually almost difficult to get off. The groin. I'll give you a better look at how that is accomplished. You can see on the inside here, these, oh, there's, the whole piece is die cast. Listen, die cast, nice and heavy. But on the inside, screwed on are these little plastic mounting tabs. And each one of these tabs has its own 
tab in location on the inside skeleton of the figure so you can see these two holes at the front and then there's another two at the side so just this one piece the groin has four really strong mounting points so they really they grasp a hold and it's it's a rock solid joint once it's on next the waist now the shin keep in mind this is a huge chunk of die cast we're not talking about plastic this is an absolutely flawless piece of die cast armor no overspray underspray chips streaks splatters bumps nothing it's like this is it's just perfect i can't state it in any other way it's really impressive the other shin now again you can see those little mounting points there the feet the thighs it's it's so solid it's actually it can be difficult to get off this is metal too i don't know every every piece of armor that i've got so far is metal the only ones that weren't metal are the breastplates part of the reason why it's actually hard sometimes to get off is because where if it was plastic you'd be able to squeeze it and deform it a little bit these metal pieces are not bending whatsoever we're almost done the, f the forearms the shoulders Ah, now we've hit the first plastic piece of the normal armor. So this is actually plastic. I wonder why they plasticed out on the shoulder where the whole rest of it so far wasn't plastic. Anyway, come on, get off. The biceps. Biceps are a little bit difficult to remove. I'm going to try to do it on camera, but I... I may not be able to. You've got to push it down a bit. I don't know if you could see that, but I just slid it so it's sort of got a gap here. And then once you've done that, it just untabs like the rest of them. But without that slide, it, it won't come off because it's got an extra tab in it. Look, I'm going to have to do that off camera. Part of the reason I had to do that off camera was that in order for it to slide down far enough to fully come off, you have to take the forearms off and given that they caused me a bit of trouble I just didn't want to show it and also on the back of these hands if I can do it without knocking his arms off that's plastic too by the way that hand piece little guard on the back of the hand looking good And the face. Oh, one more, one more, one more. The neck too. Now that's it. That's all the armor removed. In order for him to have a face, what we need to do is put on alternate pieces. So I've got this little collar, which is uh, his neck, which is just going to tab on there. And then we get a choice of the whole face, which is what I'm going to put on at the moment. So that's his kind of naked face. But alternately, if we don't like that, uh, come on, get out of there. We get this half face for when we want to display him split 50-50. And to go with that half face, we get a half neck collar for when we want to show him 50-50. Now these are the only two parts where you, you're forced to choose between left and right. So all the rest of him you could do whichever on off combination you want but with the face you definitely have to show the uh, his left side naked because they only have this option all of these pieces that we just took off can mount in places within the hanger but given that it's so big I don't want to drag it back up here again it hardly fits on my table uh, you can't fit every piece that he has on simultaneously because there are alternate pieces but all the uh, 
one of each can hang on there, but uh, only one of each. Let's have a closer look at some of this awesome detail. So I'm just going to detach my camera here. Get that out of the way. It's like a, a dream, to be honest. I remember as a kid, well not a kid, as a teenager, I used to make my own little uh, robot, my own robot models. I would use all kinds of materials. And I was always doing internal skeletons. It fascinated me. And kind of given up on that these days because, uh, you know, there's not much point in making your own stuff when it doesn't look as good as this. But this is like the, the ultimate realization of that dream. We get a full-on internal skeleton. And the only way you could do better than this would be to have the back panels remove as well. And the back panels do not come off, but it's no, it's no huge, huge loss. Uh, funnily enough, though, some of the back panels aren't die cast. For example, these backs of the thighs aren't die cast, whereas the front panels were. It's hard for me to tell if this bottom piece is. I feel that this might be plastic as well. Let me just get something to ding that with. Yeah, plastic as well. I would have liked it if the back had been done equal to the front. But that's only really quite a small issue. So it's it's very tempting to display this guy in his naked form because it's just awesome. But he looks so good in both ways with his skin on and off that I just don't know what to do. I mean, I would normally say in a situation like this, buy another one, but this thing cost me an absolute fortune, and I don't think I'm going to be buying another one anytime soon. So I don't know. He's really, really beautiful. Look at those springs in the hand. They're not real. Focus on it. They're not real springs. Obviously, that's just a, a solid piece, that hand. But the paintwork to pick out even... The, the, the gold spring section is separated by little silver sections of rod. I don't know how they get the paint so exactly perfect. I can't even see one splatter of mist-painted silver and gold there. And if, if I saw that in photos, I would just think that it's actually uh, a spring around a rod. But it's not. It's, it's just a moulded detail painted really, really well. That button you can see at the front there is his on-off button. That's the sound he makes when he goes on. One little nitpick is that that goes off too quickly. It doesn't actually pop off, but the electronics put themselves to sleep. So if you are playing with it, you come back 10 minutes later to continue what you're doing, the remote control will no longer activate him because it must be some kind of power-saving feature. I would... If I was making it, I would have just made it. If you turn it on, it's on. If you turn it off, it's off. But, you know, maybe they didn't want the batteries corroding inside of it and ruining it when they're drained too much. I'm not sure, but uh, that's a little bit annoying. But uh, what can you say? Let's see, what can else can this dude do? Hmm. Some combinations don't actually do anything, but uh, other ones do. I guess if you can read Japanese, you could probably get all the combinations off the instructions. Here's the 50-50 mode that I mentioned. Camera off. So again, another really impressive way to display it. I feel like putting this on my shelf would be kind of showing off because that's about as awesome as what you can get. 
no one comes to see my stuff anyway but if someone was coming to see my stuff this is exactly how i would put it because uh who wouldn't be interested in that that's so good when i put it into 50 50 mode i don't put anything on the side here but uh you can interpret this piece in different ways i like to just think that's how it always looks but it does look a little bit like a frame underneath as well so if you want you can magnetically attach the other piece on in that position so you've got a solid red one on one side and the frame one on the other side but uh, i don't know i just don't like to see the combination like that i feel like it's better not being on at all with his skin off let's have a better look at those pistons in the feet One thing I forgot to mention is that this chest unit is actually removable. So that, I think the point of that is just so you can put batteries in, the underside comes off, but uh, not being a person who's watched every episode, I don't know if the inside of him ever comes out in the show or not. I guess if you were actually going to play with this toy, you could work that into the, the scenario somehow. For some size comparisons, I don't have any other Mazinger Zeds, but uh, I do have this Voltron that I showed a couple of weeks ago, my Miracle Productions Voltron. And they're almost the same size. In fact, very similar size. The height is, is pretty even. I mean, Bulk-wise, obviously Voltron is uh, a little bit bulkier given his design. But both of these toys are super heavy toys. I couldn't tell you which one is heavier. They both have loads and loads of die cast and they both weigh a lot. Here's Mazinger Z next to Hasbro's MP Prime. <laughs> Poor Prime, everything's bigger than him these days. I felt he was so big at the time, but after collecting bigger figures, he seems to be getting smaller and smaller. He's amazing and next to a more current figure, a Generations Blitzwing. He's amazing and next to God Mars, another really heavy diecast figure. I come across as loving diecast, but honestly, there are some problems. I just dropped Shin, and you can see that little chip on his foot. Ah, oh, man. I hate having little chips on things. That's the big downside. If you have an accident, it can look pretty bad. Thank God that was on the foot. I would hate to drop one of these armor panels off Mazinger. I can imagine how ugly that would look with a chip on it. So best to be careful with die cast. My final thoughts. I've put off buying this for a very long time. Um, I had this on pre-order in at the start of the year, end of last year, when it was not released yet and I've got to be honest I really don't like the anime of Mazinger Z. I find it a bit of an agony to watch it bores me I don't like the style of the animation the way that it's uh, you know, I'm not going to critique the show but I just don't enjoy it let's just say that I've been mulling over it in my mind half of this year whether I can separate my lack of enthusiasm for that show from my appreciation of the figure obviously the conclusion that i ended up with is that yeah i can i can enjoy this figure um, without enjoying the show and i mean to, to be honest i've never even liked the way that the robot looks uh, i haven't given it enough time and i know a lot of other people enjoy amazing Z and uh, enjoy the way that the figure looks because it's been so popular among so many people but just every time i've looked at it in the past i've thought you know that's not for me it doesn't fit with where i want my collection to be and uh i just sort of dismissed it but given that this is supposed to be the highest point in bandai's soul of chugokan this is like uh setting the bar for what they're thinking of doing moving forward i wanted to allow myself to experience it and i didn't want to just dismiss it without actually owning it and so i've bought this figure and 
coming into it, I, I wasn't sure whether I would be glad that I did it or not. And I can say now I am glad that I bought it and I do really like what I've got in my hand. I think that owning a version of him with this much detail has let me see how such a simple looking design might actually be possible to translate to a realistic robot. Because I think honestly that was my, my biggest um, problem with the idea of Mazing in the past is that I didn't think he could really translate into a realistic robot. But this figure has changed my mind on that. The way that the ball joints fit into the shoulders but still look kind of organic. Uh, the, whole, the whole package is, is convincing me that Mazinger can stand up on his own without just being a kid's show. And Bandai have made this piece so perfectly, uh, with only the small exception of my displeasure with the elbow joint, that there's nothing bad that I can say about the figure. It's... It's a perfectly executed figure. It's done exactly how you would wish a really high-end piece to be done, and it looks good from every single direction. The accessories look good. This hanger is phenomenal. I love the way this hanger looks, this huge square block that just stands on the table. It's imposing, and it makes you want to know what's inside. And I can imagine, I haven't had anyone come who's looked at this yet, but I can imagine having this there and it's like the curiosity is going to build. What's in that box? And then the reveal with the hanger lights and all the armor panels and especially with the, the inside structure showing, it's, it's, just, it's just impressive and it's, it's well worth paying whatever you have to pay to get it. If you live in the US, you're probably lucky enough to be able to get this shipped for just a little bit more than 400 because BBTS have it from Bluefin up for 375. Uh, unfortunately, because I put off getting this for so long, my exchange rate here in Australia went down a little bit, and that coupled with the extreme weight and high shipping cost to Australia, by the time I got this, it was somewhere between 570 and 600, which is just insane. And it's part of the reason it took me so long to get, just because. You know, it's, it's, it's not an easy thing to do to come up with that kind of money for a figure. You have to, you have to budget it because it's, it's, it's hard to justify. But now that I've got it, I'm glad that I got it and I can highly recommend it. Um, it's not for everyone. It's not a toy. I would not say in any way, shape or form is this a toy because it's too easy to break by dropping these metal panels and too many parts can easily come off. But anyway, I think that gets across the way I feel about it. This has been my video review for the Solar Chugokin DX Mazinger Z. I'm Odean, and thanks for watching.